Hello everybody, it's Dr. David, the ENT doctor again. I have been asked to talk to you about some things inside the nose called the turbinates. Now, they're not turbines, they're not turbinates, they're turbinates. And they are a natural swelling within the nasal passages that comes off from the side walls of the nasal passages. And there's actually at least three pairs, some people have four pairs of turbinates. And when we're talking about the turbinates in the mainstay, we're talking about the pair that sit at the bottom part of the nose. So to designate those, we call those the inferior turbinates. Uh, and also because it's in the nose, sometimes they'll call them the inferior nasal turbinates, but one and the same. So I'm gonna be lazy, I'm just gonna call them the turbinates because it's just easier. So the turbinates are natural nasal structures who uh, have a very important role. Uh, they are basically like the air conditioning and moisturizing system for the nose. So running through, uh, oh sorry, go back one step. So the turbinate bone is its own unique bone. So it's attached uh, inside the nose to the cheekbone, so obviously on the inside. And it runs like a little shelf, so it goes from front to back, front to back, through the nose. And then overlying uh, this bone, uh, there is the, the skin of the nose, uh, just like the rest of the nose. Uh, but underneath, it's actually really quite special. And it's really quite special because it's got a vast and significant blood supply and special tissue structure that means it can swell up uh, depending on how much blood is flowing through it. So it's what we call erectile tissue. Uh, so uh, keep it above the navel, please, people. So it's called erectile tissue, uh, which means that it's subject to, subject to uh, vascular engorgement under certain circumstances. Now, the interesting thing about these turbinates uh, is that there is a natural process whereby they uh, change in size uh, from one side to the other in terms of which one's big and which one's large at any one time point. And it's something that we call the nasal cycle. We don't fully understand why it happens. But basically, it's where uh, one side, uh, the turbinate will be big and the other side will be small. And a few hours later, um, that big one gets smaller and the smaller one gets bigger. And it goes round and round, hence the name cycle. And that happens in everybody. It's a normal process. And that's the turbinates in a nutshell except when we develop pathology. Now, there's a whole heap of reasons that we can develop pathology. Probably the most common reason would be having some form of allergy, and that is basically hay fever type allergy. It's something mostly that's related to uh, in the air uh, that causes congestion and swelling. So common things would be things like dust mite, grass, pollen, animals, mold. That they, would, they are by far the most common. And they're the sort of thing that allergy testing can uh, clarify and, and, and establish what the actual problem is in terms of the cause. So that swelling then leads to a re reduction in the space inside the nose, which in turn lead, can lead to breathing problems. Other reasons the turbinates can be big could be, for example, uh, irritation from environmental factors uh, such as cigarette smoke. Uh, general dust and pollution as well. Uh, certain industrial chemicals uh, could do it too. And the other one uh, that uh, can contribute to it uh, in terms of causing congestion is having uh, stomach acid uh, reflux disease. Uh, and that uh, triggers either, the reflux comes all the way up into the nose, can trigger a, a direct reaction. Uh, but there's also links with certain nerves that go through the throat that can cause nasal congestion as well. So there's a good number of reasons why those turbinates can be a problem. One of the other things that can make the turbinates dysfunctional is if the middle part of the nose, which is called the septum, is crooked. Uh, because what happens, for again, for whatever reason with the nasal cycle, it, it seems to be sort of like a seesaw that's going back and forth, back and forth, trying to basically get itself balanced, but it, it kind of gets to there, but then it goes that way, and then so it, it tries, it pulls itself back, and it goes that way. When you have a deviated septum, middle part of the nose is crooked, uh, then instead of having a clear channel on both sides, okay, you've got an open space 
over here, and then a closed space over there. And what the turbinates will do is they'll adjust to those space changes such that the turbinate on the open side will get bigger and the turbinate on the closed side will get smaller. So it's a bizarre situation because essentially what's happening is the turbinate on the open side is actually then getting bigger to cause the same degree of blockage as what it's achieving on the other side. Because again, it's trying to get that balance. And when you're like this, well then it's heavily balanced to uh, this side is closed, this side is open. But as we go, well, I've got to get this side closed, so I'm going to make these turbinates even bigger to get things equal. And you end up blocking the good side. So that's often why when we uh, deal with surgery uh, to get things open, uh, if we're doing uh, surgery for a deviated septum, we'll also have to adjust the turbinates as well because those turbinates have become dysfunctional in their behaviour. And we've tried not doing that and found that they don't tend to reset very well. So it's an opportune moment to get things sorted. Now, when we manage turbinates, uh, it doesn't always mean surgery. In fact, obviously, if it's allergy-related, then we'll try our hardest to manage that with medication and allergy treatments. Uh, if it's environmental related, then obviously we always encourage people to stop smoking and, and so forth. But sometimes it does come to surgery. Now, this is where life gets interesting again, because there are several different surgical approaches to the turbinates. And this is not a criticism of anyone that's doing it a particular way. This is an explanation of the upsides and the downsides. Every, everything that has a benefit has a cost. So one thing you can do with the turbinates is what's called an out fracture. An out fracture basically is where you've got the turbinate coming in from the sidewall of the nose with that little bit of bone, is that you can fracture the bone and then push the turbinate to clear it out the way. Um, very low end uh, procedure in terms of morbidity, doesn't really hurt, doesn't, doesn't bleed, um, also doesn't work very well. So not one of my favorite options. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've done one for over 10 years. <laughs> so that's one option, though, just to throw it out there. Uh, another option is what's called cautery. Now, cautery means burn. Now, when we go and do cautery inside the nose, uh, that theory is that with that burn is it will lead to scar tissue uh, formation uh, that will then uh, cause a shrinkage and contraction of the mucosa. And in theory, that's great. In practice, uh, we see a lot of failures within the sort of, if they're gonna fail, um, it's probably the most common operation of the ones I'm gonna mention that I do do, which is gonna be three, this is number one. Um, it would be the one that fails the most. Uh, and it tends to fail within the first six to 12 months. So you go, well, why on earth would you do that? Well, the reason for that is for some of the other procedures I'm gonna mention, uh, getting physically inside the nose can be quite difficult if the patient happens to be really, really young. So certainly like under the age of two, there's really not much working room and we need to modify uh, the situation to suit. And in that scenario, uh, cautery is a great time buying exercise. And then I, that's, that's, that's how I perceive it to be. It's a, it's a time buying exercise. So that's one thing. The next thing uh, at a more aggressive end of the scale, in fact, the most aggressive end of the scale surgically, is using a, a machine called a micro um, which is a machine that has a rotating blade attached to suction. Uh, and I, I, I try and explain, it's kind of like a hedge trimmer, okay? So you, you, you run it along the surface, okay? And as it does so, it munches up the soft tissue. You get down to the bone, it won't munch through the bone, so you've got to physically remove some of that bone. Uh, we don't take the whole turbinate out. Like I said before, it's a really important part of the nose. So we leave a good portion of it in, uh, and, and, and then that's basically the procedure. Uh, so the benefit of that is that it creates the most definitive space inside the nose compared to the other three that I'm gonna talk about, and of which I've already mentioned one, which was the turbinate quarry, just in case you've lost track. And the microdebrider-assisted turbinectomy, turbinoplasty, turbinate reduction, variations on the theme, which was playing with words. Uh, benefit is the best airway. The cost of it, uh, the cost is bleeding. Uh, because it's the most invasive, it, you do have a, a period of time, which is you know roughly about a week, 
where blood noses afterwards can be quite a bother and quite a nuisance. So it, it's not to pretend that it's not without that, but I'm talking about short term for the long term. Uh, in terms of failures, it has the lowest failure rate uh, out there uh, with regards to the need basically to do it again. And now I've said that there's three, so that's, that's, that's two mentioned so far. The third one is using radiofrequency ablation. Now that's fancy talk for basically melting the tissue, but using a, a special uh, technology that uh, is not done at a high temperature, so it's not a burn as such uh, compared to cautery. Uh, and it, but it's a sort of, think of it kind of like a hot knife uh, through butter. Uh, so you heat the knife up, put it through the butter, um, and as it goes through the butter, the, where it contacts, obviously, it goes through the butter, but the rest of the butter's fine, which is different to putting a piece of butter onto a fry pan under fire where the whole thing uh, gets cooked. So it's, it's uh, sort of got that. Uh, its benefits uh, are that it's suitable for uh, children where uh, they're big enough uh, that we can get it into the nose, but obviously the, the child is uh, not yet big enough that we can get the microdebride into the nose, so it's, it has that benefit. Its other benefit uh, is that it tends to last uh, for certainly longer than cautery, but not as long as microdebrider. So we, for the failures that we see, we sort of, on average, see them about two years down the track. Uh, but having said that, its failure rate is quite low, um, nonetheless. And what's its cost? Well, it causes nasal congestion, runny nose and stuff for about a week like you got a cold. So again, not a huge downside uh, to it all. Um, and, and I guess the other sort of offset cost is it's not as effective as the microdebrider, but I've explained why we'd take that compromise. So that's the conversation for turbinates uh, there. Uh, I would always emphasize that allergy management is really important. Sometimes people, uh, their, their noses are so blocked, uh, so obstructed, that uh, we need to surgically unblock them so they can start getting the sprays in the nose so the sprays can work. And then uh, I think for anyone with allergies, if anyone has an allergy where their allergies were so bad they ended up needing an operation to be able to breathe properly, those people need ongoing management for their allergies, uh, which includes something called desensitization and, or immunotherapy, which is something I'm gonna make a, a talk about for you some other time. Uh, and then uh, another thing I'm gonna make a talk about for you um, is, is this uh, thing that's got a little bit out of, of hand in terms of how people understand it. And I wanna bring that back to some reality uh, and something called empty nose syndrome. So don't get too fussed on, on the last parts because they're distractions to the bigger story that I've wanted to share today. So I will leave it at that and I'll catch you around again sometime soon. Bye.